Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm excited to bring you the 24 Tags of Christmas 2015. This is a series that I did last year, and I'm doing it again this year with different ideas. And I wanted to share a giveaway with you as well. So please visit my blog using the link in the description down below in order to get involved in that giveaway. Would love for you to be a winner. So today we're going to be embossing a scene. And yes, I said embossing a scene, not coloring a scene. Oh my gosh, the world's gonna end, I'm not coloring. I have four different colors of paper and I wanna test some gold embossing powder on both darks and lights. And I'll be using the Misty to do my stamping. I'm gonna use this Santa's Flight stamp set from Ellen Hudson. And the tag size is determined by the tag portion. There's a tag stamp and it has like a to and from from Santa. So it's perfect for the gifts for the kids or for a secret Santa gift at work or in your craft club or wherever you might do a secret Santa. So I'm going to use my D static fire. I never know what to call this thing. It's an embossing D static thing because it helps the embossing powder not to stick where you don't want it to stick. So whatever that thing is, it's going to be linked with the rest of the supplies in the description down below. So I have stamped up, or inked up my stamp. Gosh, I can't talk today with Versamark ink and it's a sticky-ish ink and it's going to stick to the embossing powder I'm going to use. So I'm going to tap it on here and then kind of shake it off into a coffee filter so I can easily return it to the jar and reuse that. Make sure that you clean out any stray hairs that are in there. I discovered that I haven't done that very well lately and I had a few spots where I had to pull some little hairs out of my embossing before I started heating it up. I'm using my new Wagner heat tool. The uh, heating gun is really, really nice. It does a very quick job of it. And I just went through each one of them and embossed them. I used the Wow embossing powder on two and I used the Stampendous on two. And since this stamp has a lot of detail in all those little letters, I wanted to see if there's a difference. And I literally, by looking at them, cannot tell which one was which. So the Wow and the Stampendous are pretty much exactly the same, but this is the detail powder that Wow has. Uh, we're also going to use one of the non-detail powders, but the Stampendous one and the WOW that are linked in the description are pretty much identical. I think the Stampendous is a slightly better deal per gram, but that's about it. So now I'm trying to figure out my layout for the other side of it, and that's where the cute design is going to come in. I was debating whether to have that little sign down there at the bottom and decided not to, but first I'm going to stamp the little reindeers. So I get them in place where I want them in the Misty. And then I line up uh, the stamp and press it down. So now the stamp is picked up on that clear acrylic glass portion. Put my de static of fire thingy down there so that none of the powder sticks where I don't want it. Press it down and I'm going to use the same golds that I used on the other side. So I'm going to do the same thing. And if you want to eliminate having extra stuff, just put the powder right where you want it. There's no reason to go any further with it. Now, sometimes you end up with a little extra piece here and there, a little extra flake. I just use my little finger knife and pull off little pieces because I, I'm just a real nut about not wanting to have a whole lot of that stray powder. Some of it you can't avoid, I think. It's just the way that embossing is, but you can pull off some of those bits of it. So I do try to fix that as much as I can before I take it to the heat tool because that will melt it in place and it will end up being a little dot. You can use that little finger knife to flick off some of those tiny dots if they're small enough. Now, after I got all the gold embossing on there, I wanted to do some clear embossing of the HO cubed, which is a cute sentiment, but I didn't want the sentiment to stick out on it too much. I wanted it to kind of be a subtle thing in the background. So I'm doing it in clear embossing powder, which I keep in my big container. And I did all of them at the same time. So I stamped all the HO cubes and then just dumped them all, dumped the clear embossing powder onto all of them at the same time, just to make it quicker. Because this stuff does stay sticky for a little bit, but you can see how it makes a tone on tone look. And so it's not going to stick out as boldly as brightly. Now on the lighter ones, I'm gonna have to do something else to make it stick out because here it's way too invisible on both this cream shimmery paper and the white paper and I'll have links to all those papers down below. The, the cream and the black are both shimmery cardstocks. 
and so they're really fun extra little touches to have a little extra shimmer. Now here's the one that I told you was a bigger crystal embossing powder and I'll have both of these linked so in case you want to get some of this high uh, ultra high I think is what it's called it's it's it really embosses really deeply but it doesn't do detail so I tried it on the detail of the reindeer and it was mush so that's why the reindeer got done in that gold detail but I'm taking the stamp pad I wanted to make a little house that Santa's flying over and I just made a triangle with the stamp pad and I'm going to use that with the silver powder to make my little houses how fun is that don't even need a stamp for it you could also just use a couple sticky notes to make a little mask but why do that when you can just stamp on something and uh, make a little triangle so I'm just going to shake on some of this powder. You can see how giant those crystals really are. And then heat set them. And this stuff just pools up and makes like this super shimmery, shiny silver. And it comes in a lot of different colors too. So you can check out those if you have other ideas for ways that you might use this kind of a crazy embossing powder. Lots of fun. Of course, it's blowing all that stuff off of my surface. <laughs> so next, I needed to figure out a way after all those dried off, make sure you don't touch them. Um, oh, and another tip for you that I found out the hard way. Since you're embossing both sides, the other side will re-get re -get stickified. What is that? I don't even know how to say that. It will get stickified again. So when you dry them, don't lay them down flat as you're drying them because you want to stand them up so that the whole paper cools because the gold embossing on the other side will uh, become messy then. So I'm just using some Distress inks, both on the Nina cardstock and I'll use some as well on the Shimmery to just put some blue in the sky. And that makes the Ho Cubed come out of the, uh, out of the, the background. I almost wish that I had done the Ho Cubed after I had done the Distress ink because I think that would have darkened it and then it would have kind of been a little bit of a disappearing act like the other ones were. I think that could have been fun but these actually do come out really cute the one on the cream is actually gonna be my favorite by the time we're all done said and done here so I'm just kind of going over a couple layers until I get that color as smooth as I want it and of course I'm gonna add a lot of snow to it so if there's any places where you don't get that ink on really perfectly not gonna matter the ink went on really well on this shimmery cardstock it's a smoother surface than the Nina and it just went on beautifully and I love that Peacock Feathers color with the cream. I think that is a beautiful combination. Absolutely gorgeous. And I'm gonna add snow to it, which will be white, and it feels very different than the cream. So it just had a really different look, and I really liked that one a lot. Here's a couple ideas for snow. You can use some regular acrylic white paint, but I'm gonna use some enamel accents white on some. You can use some Copic Opaque White, which I've showed you before. This is the other size bottle that I told you about liquid pearls, there is some uh, white pens, white gel pens, lots of different ways to add snow. Now this bottle of opaque white is the small one and it has this little brush. The little brush I find like incredibly annoying. <laughs> I just can't use it. I can't do it. So I am using the regular brush with it and I want to make sure that you know that you need to clean off your brush after this because this stuff it's going to dry fairly hard so it's not a watercolor it's going to be more like a paint so if you use your good brushes then make sure you do that i'm just going to paint snow on the top really simply with a simple line and then you can add icicles to it you could leave it with just the white snow but if you add little little places where the paint drips down a little bit you can add like all kinds of extensive icicles make them really long and tall i'm making just a few small ones and make, make them somewhat irregular so it looks more like realistic snow. It looks really fun. But how nice is that white pop against the cream HO cubed? I think that really just looks beautiful. Now I wanted to add a moon to it so I decided to take a little three quarter, I think it's a three quarter inch circle that I punched to put right over top of the HO cubed and that turns out to be my moon. Here's the one on the, um, the white paper, and I'm just adding my stars to it before I added the moon. You can do that with any of the other materials for making white snow that I'd already showed you. 
And here's the enamel accents. This stuff goes on a little bit thicker and it does take a little longer to dry, but it also is pretty cool. And you can make the dots of snow with it. You can do a lot of different things with this enamel accents. I forgot I even had it. I can't even remember how long I've had it in my collection, but it was very cool and it, it came out kind of thick. So it felt very much like snow. And then here is more of that going on to the black one. So these were really fun little tags to make, and I hope that you might consider doing something crazy and embossed like this. See if you can make a whole embossed scene onto one of the tags. I think that's a really different look. It's something that, at least for me, I never do just embossing like this. I always seem to have some kind of coloring or inking or watercolor or something on it, and just the embossing was a really interesting challenge for me. So on the top, the scene there is for the playlist for this year. All the videos that have gone up in this year's series are there. If you want to see last year's series, you can click on the little one at the bottom. And I would recommend definitely checking out the links in the description for my blog. Or if there's any of the supplies here that you're interested in, they're linked there as well as over on the blog. And you can hit the like button, which is always a good thing for any YouTuber to see. And the subscribe button if you want to get more videos from me. Talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.